your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Your grace and mercy brought us through and we live in this moment because of you we want to thank you and praise you to your grace and mercy brought us through. And we thank God tonight that his grace and mercy has brought us through. We had a whole long week and he had brought us through another fri Friday night. And we just thank him for his grace and his mercy. And we come tonight and say, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my mouth. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me Glad, he has made me glad, oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah. He has made me glad. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love you, adore you, we bow down before you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Oh, Holy Ghost, what a comfort you are. Holy Ghost, what a comfort you are. You lead us, you guide us, you live right inside us. Holy Ghost, what a comfort you are. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love you adore you we bow down before you heavenly father we appreciate you oh holy ghost what a comfort you are 
Holy Ghost, what a comfort you are. You saved my soul from sin and set the Holy Ghost within. Holy Ghost, what a comfort you are. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Oh, Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. I love you, adore you. I bow down before you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Tonight, God, we just want to tell you how we appreciate you, how we love you, how we adore you there. God, we come tonight just to bow down before you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Hallelujah. Someday, someday. I'll go where Jesus is someday, someday. I'll go where Jesus is someday, some sweet day, someday. I'll go where Jesus is. And I'll be caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him. I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. Yes, I'll be caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him. Joy and happiness, peace of mind. Someday in glory, I'll tell the story. I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Someday, someday, we'll go where Jesus is. Someday, someday, we'll go where Jesus is. Someday, someday, we will go where Jesus is, and we'll be caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him, we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. Yes, we'll be caught up to meet him, caught up to meet him. Joy and happiness, peace of mind. Someday in glory, we'll tell the story. We'll be caught up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. And that's our prayer tonight, dear God. That someday, some sweet day, we'll go where Jesus is. And we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. There'll be joy and happiness, peace of mind. We'll have no more worries. Someday in glory, we'll tell the story. We'll be all caught up to meet him in the air. Have mercy. Hallelujah. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God. To whom all praise is due, yes, I stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, Lord, we stand in awe of you. 
Mighty God, to whom all praise is due, Lord, we stand in awe of you. Mighty God, to whom all praise is due, we come tonight, Lord, and we stand in awe of you. You're the creator of the universe. What can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able. Jesus, and there is nothing, there's nothing you cannot do, there's nothing you cannot change, there's nothing you cannot turn around, you are able, great and mighty God, I put my trust in you. You are able, Jesus, for there is nothing, there's nothing you cannot do, there's nothing you cannot change, nothing you cannot turn around, you are able, great and mighty God. I put my trust in you. You are able, Jesus. You are able to my dear God. Hide me now under your wings. Come Within your mighty fall, and when the ocean rise and thunder roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. And when the ocean rise and thunder roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Hallelujah. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the way, 
the truth, the light. I am the way, the truth, the light. I am the way, the truth, the light. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Father, we adore you. We lift our hands before you. How we love you. Spirit, we adore you. We lay all life before you. How we love you. Savior, we adore you. We lay all life before you. How we love you. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 There is something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the shower after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about that name. King, and kingdom shall all pass away, but there is something about that name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the shower. After the rain, Jesus, 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 there is something about that name, King. That kingdoms will all pass away, but 
for there is something about that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you done. We are so blessed. All souls are at rest. Oh, Lord. We give you thanks. Hallelujah tonight, dear God. We just want to give you all the thanks and all the praise that belongs to you, dear God. Over to you, Pastor Rui. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. We are on a series called the the false god of the debased mind and last time i told you that the battle of your the there is a battle for our souls being fought between god and the devil and the lord loves us so much that he wants to keep us even though we sin even though we operate in carnality but when we there are states of mind and the battle for our, for our souls, whether God wins it, whether God wins our soul or the devil wins our soul depends on the state of the mind. And there are four states of mind. The debased mind is the mind where God gives up a person to the enemy, gives up a person to think, uh, to, to believe in lies. That is what we saw in the book of Romans chapter number one. Okay, we will. I will not go into that. I have uh, covered some things, some revelations on this, on the debased mind in the last two sermons. So uh, I will not go into that. But what we are on right now are the four types of minds that the Bible talks about. And I already told you the carnal mind is the first one, the spiritual mind, which is also called the mind of Christ, the mind of God. Third is the anxious mind. And the fourth is the debased mind. So let me, these are the four types of mind. Before going into the carnal mind, first let us understand, uh, we are going to spend a lot of time on the carnal mind and to understand the carnal mind. For us to understand the carnal mind, let's understand how our mindsets are shaped and how is a mindset created. We all have a mindset. We all have a mindset, a particular way of perspective, a particular way of thinking, a, a particular way of evaluating things, of looking at situations, of planning things, of living life. We have a particular mindset. Okay? Hallelujah. Are we together? But when uh, the thing is, when we were not in Christ, we had all different mindset. But when we come into Christ, the body of Christ, all of them have, have to suppo supposed to have one mind. We will come to that. That's mentioned in Philippians chapter number three, what Paul writes. We all have to be of the same mind. That does not mean we have to come into agreement that we all should be vegetarians. No, not that kind of agreement or that kind of mind. We all have supposed to be broken the or destroyed the car the old mind and come into the newness or the renewing mind called the mind of christ okay so so let's understand that we all have a had a particular way or even now have a particular way of mindset of thinking of evaluating or of perspective that we that we think or that we uh, create the way of lives and live accordingly so the mindsets are shaped and how the mindsets are shaped the doctrine that we hear shapes our mindsets that is where where, where i ended last time the doctrine that we hear shapes our mindset the doctrine that we hear shapes our mindset now you will say when we were babies what doctrine did we hear we did not that so what happens is what is the doctrine that we hear 
the doctrine that we hear is the lifestyle and and the environment that we are introduced to from our childhood that is the doctrine infiltrated into our mind that shapes our mind and controls our life okay the lifestyle the teachings or the way we saw our parents behave with us the, the way they behaved with us the way they treated us the way they spoke to us is the doctrine that has that has shaped our mindset for people who had rich parents and who were treated well you know kind of whenever they wanted even at the age of 11 they wanted a bike super bike a super car the father was rich and kind of okay take the money buy that car buy that bike buy this buy that they they in the in their childhood in their younger days in their teenage days they were introduced to that lifestyle which was a doctrine to them and then because of that they will never understand what is hard work and 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 all their lives they will never understand how 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 some people work hard to earn their living because they were introduced to a lifestyle in the beginning of their lives that shaped that shaped their lifestyle the whole life journey a mindset was created through a mindset was created through the lifestyle and environment they were introduced to hallelujah the only reason the people of israel were not able to enter the promised land they were chosen that was god's plan that was god's promise for that's why god invested so much he encountered moses he trained moses he brought moses god did all the hard work of those 10 plagues so much hard work god did and at the end the people that god invested in were not ready <laughs> to get into the promised land how terrible was that can you believe that hallelujah imagine you investing in a person for around 25 years giving up your 25 years to train that person to equip that person to bring them out from something and then at the end you realize this person is not going to go anywhere how frustrated you would be do you understand the frustration of God? Why did that happen? The whole generation perished in the wilderness. God had to raise up a new generation along with Joshua and Caleb, the men of renewed mindset. So to, to take them into the promised land, the men of renewed mindset. Romans chapter number 12, we will come to that. Hallelujah. So the problem with the people of Israel, the reason why they were not able to enter the, the promised land was because that generation that God took out of Egypt, they grew in Egypt. They grew in slavery. They grew in, in doing that job under Pharaoh. They ate from the table of Pharaoh. They ate from the table of Egypt. They were introduced to the wisdom of Egypt, not to the wisdom of God. From that childhood, that shaped their mindset. And even they were on the verge of the promised land. You know what they said? We want to go back to Egypt. Because it was a mindset. Do you agree with me now? That the lifestyle and the environment. Now that is one example. There are many examples like that. Take for example Gideon. Gideon grew up. Gideon was a warrior in the eyes of God. He was a man of God. He was the one who would, who would deliver Israel. But Gideon don't, did not know that. Why? Because he had a mindset. Where did the mindset come from? The mindset came from his family. I am, what tribe was he? I think Benjamin. I am of the little tribe. I am of the lowest tribe. And my family is the lowest family and I am the lowest and the, and the smallest in my family. So that was the mindset. Why? Because that, that, was, that, that is how he was brought up. That is how he was brought up. That is how he was brought up. People of God. Mindset plays a very important role in your salvation. The Bible says you are made up of and I am made up of body, soul and spirit. The body means the flesh. The flesh has its own will. 
the spirit has its own will. And that's why when you read Galatians chapter number 5, you will see that the, uh, the spirit and the flesh are contrary to each other. They fight with each other. The only neutral part of the being of a human is the soul because the soul consists of something called the mind. Are we together? So, so when you are saved, the Bible says your soul is saved. Have you ever heard in the Bible your flesh is saved? No. Your spirit is saved? No. The spirit is pure when it when it when it is come when it is joined with the spirit of God. It's it's a, that is what uh, Apostle Paul write, uh, writes about that when we commune with the Lord, fellowship with the Lord, we become one spirit with Him. That is being born again, born again by the Spirit. The Spirit is pure. The Spirit is not filthy. The flesh is filthy. It, it cannot be purified. As long as you and I live in the flesh, we will struggle. Because that is the flesh. Okay? The only neutral part is your soul. The soul has the ability to make a decision. The soul has the will. Are we understanding? The will that we have is in the soul part. The soul has the will whether to take part of the flesh or to align with the spirit and walk in the spirit. The soul contains the mind that's the neutral part the mind so when you are saved not your your flesh is not saved your flesh will go to the grave and will decay one day your spirit is already pure it comes from god what is saved is your soul so the salvation so the salvation it it, it does not means that oh once you accept jesus you got the ticket to heaven you have to practice your salvation you have to work your salvation with fear and trembling. That is what is working your salvation is renewing your mind. Your mindset plays a very important role in your salvation. That's why the battle for your soul depends on your mind, depends on your mindset. Are we understanding? Okay, what did I say? I said that the doctrine that we were introduced to, the lifestyle, the environment that is what shapes our mindset turn with me to philippians chapter number three <clears throat> turn with me to philippians chapter number three and let's read from verse number one onwards we will read the whole chapter because that is about the mindset Okay, Philippians chapter number 3, we'll read from the first verse. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it, it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of mutilation, of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Now stop there. Now after this, what Apostle Paul writes is his old mindset and the way his mindset was shaped. Starting from verse number 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. This is how he was trained. This is the doctrine he was introduced to. Are we understanding that? So he is saying, if and, and what he is saying, that is, if I, if I abide by those things, my old mindset, the way my mindset was shaped, a Pharisee of the Pharisees, zealous of the law, as per the law, if you judge me, okay? If you judge me as per the law of Moses, I am blameless. I am the most righteous man. So that is how my mindset was shaped. But what he says after that, so that is, he, that is what he is talking about, the confidence in the flesh. If you, 
if you abide by your old mindset and you are confident, that confidence is not the confidence in the spirit. That confidence is not the confidence in God. That confidence, confidence is in the confidence of your flesh. So he is teaching people there that this is what I was. This is, this is how I studied. This is what I was introduced to. This was my doctrine. This was my mindset. And if I take these things into consideration and work as per it, I would have confidence in the flesh what you have. You are teaching all those things, you know, about circumcision and all those stuff. But verse number seven, verse number seven, very important. Listen to me. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted, uh, I have counted loss for Christ. So what we, you and me need to do, what Paul did, that is what we need to do. We have to throw our old mindset that was structured by our old lifestyle. We have to destroy it completely. Hallelujah. Everyone say, I need to give up my old mind. I need to give, up, need my to give up my old mind. Yes. I need to give up. We need to give up. We need to give up our old mind. Hallelujah. Many Christians yes. haven't done that. Most of the Christians I speak to haven't done that. Oh, I know this already. I have been there. I have, I have done this. I have done that. I have done this. They, that is your confidence in the flesh. You cannot depend on past experiences. Just because, just because a, a doctorate or a PhD is good, but it's good for the world. It's not, it's, it's, it does not qualify you to be a, a scholar in God's eyes. To be a, a scholar in God's eyes, you have to, you have to scrap your dig degrees that you received from the school of Egypt and go to the top of the mountain and start learning from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we understanding? That is the problem was, that was the problem with Moses. Do you know the Bible says when Stephen preached the sermon, the, the martyr, the martyr who was killed for, for the gospel in the book of Acts, when he preached the sermon, he mentioned that Moses, in his sermon, he mentioned that Moses was trained in the wisdom of Egypt, in the school of Egypt. Moses, was, his mind was structured in a certain way. Now the school of Egypt teaches confidence in the flesh. The wisdom of e Egypt teaches confidence in, in the flesh. That is how Egypt is. They, met, they worship uh, the Pharaoh as God. They worship the flesh. That is what they teach. So Moses tried to do ministry in that wisdom. What he tried to do was, he tried to go, he tried and going to show the people of Israel that I am your deliverer by killing a Egyptian, uh, Egyptian warrior. By killing an Egyptian warrior. So that is what, what he thought he will do. I am, I am trained in the strength of, Moses had a lot of bodily strength. Maybe, I don't know if there was karate or judo that time. I don't know what was being taught in Egypt. But he was a good physical fighter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do we know that? He killed an Egyptian. He killed an Egyptian. The Bible also says, you know, when the daughters of Jethro were drawing the water from the well, the other shepherds came to, to fight with them. Moses was the one who came and fight and drove them off. He had, a, he had great skills in fighting. That is what he learned from Egypt. He was, a, he was a very mighty man when it came to flesh. When it came to fighting in the flesh. Physical, physical fight. But that is not how God would work. So God broke him in the land of Midian. He forgot about what his strength is. He forgot about his calling. And when he forgot about himself, God met him in the burning bush and told him, Moses, that is not how you defeat Pharaoh and Egypt. I will teach you. I will teach you. Throw your rod on the ground. And it became a snake. Hallelujah. Amen. When he threw his rod on the ground, it became a snake. The Bible says, read your Bible. It says, Moses got afraid. 
So a man who can fight in the flesh is, is, not, uh, is not afraid of the human beings, of the, of the fleshy things. He is afraid of the spiritual spirits. So God was training him in the things of the spirit. So what Moses had to do is he had to throw his degrees and his physical training that he received from Egypt to trash. He had to start afresh. You need to start afresh. We need to give up our old mindset. Okay, the way our mindset was structured. The old mind. The old mind is, is the carnal mind. And many of us, even, even being Christian, uh, even being a Christian for 20 years, we still have the old mind. We still have the old mind. We still have the carnal mind. We still operate in the experiences of the past. We still operate in the doctrine that shaped our mindset, the old mind. But Apostle Paul says that verse number 7, coming back to Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 7, he says, What things were gained to me? What things were gained to me? Hold on. <clears throat> These I have counted loss for Christ. He gave up that old mindset. Verse number 8, Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and, I, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Do you want the knowledge of Christ? You need to suffer the loss of all things. Hallelujah! Everyone say, if I need to gain the knowledge of Christ, I need to suffer the loss of all things. Give up all things. Give up the old if mind. I need to gain the knowledge of Christ, I need to give up all things. things. Hallelujah. Suffer the loss. Yes, suffer the loss of all things. Suffer Not all things. The old mind. The old mind. The old structure. Set it. Mindset. And the more you will... The more you will get rid of the old mind and of the carnal mind, the more you will get the revelations of Christ. And you will be able, God will be able to equip you by his knowledge. God will be able to equip you by, with his doctrine and give you a renewed mindset. The spiritual mind is a renewed mindset. Okay, let's go ahead. Verse number nine, that I may, uh, verse number eight, that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Hallelujah. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being confirmed to his death. When we operate in the renewed mindset, we are termed as righteous. We are not creating our own righteousness. Oh, I am learned. I have a PhD. I have a degree. I have a doctorate. And then I have experiences. I have this. I, I have that. We are creating our own righteousness that does not even count. All our righteousness are like filthy rags. The book of Isaiah says. But when we operate in the renewed mindset, give up the old mind, God terms us as righteous. And when we are righteous, we can commune with God. When He... Uh, clothes us with righteousness and what happens that's the another thing that happens when we operate in the renewed mindset gain the knowledge of christ we take part of the power of his resurre resurrection verse number 10 and we fellowship of his suffering and we be we being confirmed to his death we understand what he did for us verse number 11 if by any means i i may attain to the resurrection from the dead not that I already, I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. That is a renewed mindset. We don't dwell on the past. We don't operate in the intelligence and experiences and the success and of the achievements, of the degrees we achieved. 
of things we achieved in the past but we forget everything that is behind and press on looking forward to the destiny to the price that uh, that jesus christ has laid hold of us that is how apostle paul is speaking he says i have not perfected but i press on i press on i press on so that i may attend the resurrection from the dead and i may be with him okay let's let's go ahead verse number 14 i press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of god in christ jesus now this is important verse 15 therefore let us as many as are mature have this mind and if in anything you think otherwise god will reveal even this to you nevertheless to the degree that we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us be of the same mind you see that so the body of christ is supposed to have one mind which mind the new the renewed mindset he says he says what was 15 let us as many as are mature have this mind which mind so he is talking this chapter is about the mindset many people don't know it philippians chapter number three it's about the mindset first of all apostle paul talks about his old mind and he says i gave that gave that up i i threw it it is rubbish and i did that because i wanted to gain christ and then he talks about his journey about what he will do and then he talks about we all need to have this mind the renewed mind okay hallelujah the body of christ is not united because oh i am a vegetarian you are a vegetarian we agree together that we should eat veg we are united no not that unity it is talking about the unity of the mind of christ are we together it is talking about being united by a vision that god has i want to fulfill god's purpose you know the same purpose you want to fulfill and then we are united we want to walk in that way in the renewed mindset and that is the mind the body of christ is supposed to have hallelujah are we together so what does that mean that means that you might be sitting in a church and saying i am a part of this church i am a part of this ministry or fellowship but yes physically you are a part of that ministry but spiritually if you don't carry the mind of christ and have given up the old mind in the mind you are not united in the mind apostle paul says the church has to be united how by having this mind he talks about the renewed mindset are we together he says nevertheless 616 to the degree that we already have attained let us walk by the same rule let us be of the same mind brethren join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern how many pre preachers can say that my life is a pattern you can follow my life you can see what a new mindset looks like so you have me because there was no bible the new testament at that time and so apostle paul made his life the new testament and no wonder the major part of the new testament is written by him hallelujah he made his life an example of a renewed mindset and that was not easy giving up the degrees that he received in the school of the pharisees he was a student of gamaliel he was um, respected by a lot of jewish people he was a great teacher he was zealous he was he was a great uh, pharisaical activist he had a lot of status but he had to give those up everything of those and those people who held him in honor those people wanted to have him killed now but he was okay with that so he is saying the way i gave up my old mindset that is the same pattern you need to walk in hallelujah amen you need to be that pattern for your children we will come to that you need to we need to be in our generation we need to be that pattern to the younger generation we need to be that pattern to that younger i will come to that because remember what i told you your early life shapes your whole journey 
the whole lifetime journey, the, your early life, the things you listen, the things you see, that is the doctrine you receive and it shapes you. So the younger generation needs to see Christ. The younger generation needs to see the pattern of the ancient of days. How will they see that when we walk in it? When we walk in it. Hallelujah. Okay. Are we understanding that? We will come to that. And when I come to the carnal mindset. Okay. So Apostle Paul is saying, verse number 17, Brethren, join in following my example. So he is creating a legacy. Do you know, I want to tell you one thing. Ministry is not at all about being sus successful in your life. You are a successful minister when you were able to create a legacy that goes on from generation to generation to generation. That is how I count success in ministry. I will come to that. I have not yet come to that topic. You were able to be a successful servant of God when through your life, it's not about the, the, the big church you built and at the end you messed it up and you went to the grave with all accusations and falsehood upon your head. That is not a ministry, my dear friends. Maybe, yeah, you, no, no, but that guy, that prophet was mighty. Yeah, that is how people follow prophets. You know, people who have passed away. No, no, they were mighty, but see how they went to their grave. They did not create a legacy. And I don't, I don't count that as success in their ministry. I will count a person as a successful minister of the gospel when that person has created a legacy. Look at evangelist, evangelist Renard Bonke. He passed away. The day he passed away, I was, I think I was outside in a, in a store or something and then I heard the news and I was literally having tears in my eyes because I admired that man and, but he left, it did, it did not happen that his ministry shut down. He created a legacy. He passed on the baton. He passed on the teachings. He passed on the renewed mindset. Are we understanding? We will come to the Old Testament later. And when you read the Old Testament, God stresses on something. God stresses on teach your children. Teach your children. Teach your children. Teach your children. The church has forgotten to teach your children. Teach your children. Pass it on. The best time you can teach your children is when they are growing up. If you have not taught the children when they are growing up, they have developed another mindset. That is what God is interested in. That is what devil is interested in. He is not interested. I think I taught that sermon once. I told that the devil is not interested in an individual. He is interested in the bloodline of that individual. The offspring he produces. He is interested in the whole generation. And it's, it is linked to the mindset. Hallelujah. Can we shout hallelujah? Are we together until now? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, yeah, I was on Philippians 3. He says, uh, Apostle Paul says, verse 18, For many walk of whom I have, uh, I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their minds uh, mind on earthly things. For our citizen, citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will trans transform our lowly body, that it may be confirmed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to able even to subdue all things to, to himself. So he is talking about, okay, he is talking about the false teachers and exposing them and all those stuff. But he is saying, this mind is going to make us await for the heavenly city and make us realize that we are not the citizens of earth 
or we are not supposed to set our minds on earthly things but on heavenly things where we belong to where we belong to and then he says because if we set our mind and have this renewed mindset when christ comes and the dead in christ will rise first and you who are alive your bodies will be changed you will be resurrected hallelujah i told you the difference between resurrection when a person dies okay and jesus has not come the rapture has not happened and now a person a christian dies a christian who was walking in the precepts of god having a renewed mindset his body is uh, in the grave <clears throat> his body is in the grave but his spirit goes to god so so people think that people are sleeping in 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 the in the grave they have not gone to heaven no his spirit has gone to gone to the lord remember when uh, elijah and moses met with jesus it was the spirit of elijah the spirit of moses meeting with jesus even when jesus re resurrected the bible says that the many graves were opened read your book matthews the gospel of matthews and they were resurrected that there was a resurrection when jesus resurrected who were those people who resurrected those were the people who believed in jesus while he was doing ministry so those who believed in jesus when jesus resurrected they resurrected that means they got a glorious body are we understanding if we die before christ comes we will go to god our spirit will go to god but our bodies will be in the grave it is decayed the bones will be there but when christ comes back on the day of rapture we will that decayed body will be changed into a glorious body and it will clothe us in heaven and those who are alive will be changed in a blink of eye to a glorious body which will never decay so resurrection is about having a glorious body which will never decay okay i have already taught that sermon in detail when i took the uh, first resurrection and the second death any which ways so that is what he's saying he's he's saying the renewed mindset will will lead you to the resurrection of the dead okay so that now we are on the in introduction of mindsets i'm giving you an introduction how the mindset how the mindset is shaped and what is the old mind now uh, another words in the introduction of this mindsets is romans chapter number 12 romans chapter number 12 let's go there verse number 2 verse number two and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the what by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god that is how you prove the will of god that is how you walk in the will of god when you are not conformed to the world to the patterns of the world to the old mindset and but you are renewed so the new mindset is a renewing mindset that means it is renewed day by day okay it is taught day by day it's a it's a renewing mindset like how you have an insurance policy let's say your car insurance policy you took the insurance policy that does not means that insurance policy will last for you till your death till the car is scrapped or something like that you have to renew that policy every year so that is renewing of mind you have to you know you have to look at the deductibles and whatever the coverage coverage and see what accidents happen or what repairs were done and then you have to pay pay for the renewal price and renew the policy that is how that is what is the bible talking about that the new mindset the spiritual mindset is a renewing mindset it's not something i got the new mindset today so i will forget about it we have to work on it because it has to be renewed every day are we understanding if we don't work on the renewed mindset it is not renewed we will go back to the old mind the new mindset has to be renewed every day how it is renewed by meditating on the word of god by being in the presence of god by spending time in 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 a in the fellowship of god's people the mindset is renewed by hearing the right voice the teachings of the word of god the mindset is renewed 
so the new mindset is not about being confirmed the new the old mindset is a confirmed mindset are we understanding the old mind you have that was structured by your life's your early lifestyle and your environment and the doctrines you you, you heard that was that is a confirmed mindset so you don't have to renew it there are things that are embedded into your mind that has become a stronghold let me say the old mindset is like a stronghold you know like the like like the city of jericho so it had walls and no one had to do anything the enemy could not get in it it was an established stronghold so that is the old mindset the new mindset is not does not looks like a stronghold the new mindset looks like a flowing river like a flowing stream of water so what you have to do it you have to keep pouring into that river that is renewing and the water is flowing for the water to flow in your in your city in your village there needs to be rain every year if it rains properly there will be the river flowing the year it does not rains you will see the rivers driving drying up is that true hallelujah so are you understanding the old mindset is a confirmed mindset it does not needs renewal it's like a stronghold in india uh, i was looking at the indian strongholds there are many strongholds in india that the kings and the emperors have built and some of the strongholds which are 700 years old they are still standing there was no renewal made to it they are still standing are you understanding so that is the old mindset something the devil planted during your childhood it still exists and it will still function like a stronghold but when what god does is god wants you to have a renewed mindset god wants you to, you to have not a stronghold mindset but a mindset that flows like a river flows like a river and now for the river to flow there needs to be rain and that rain is renewal do not be confirmed to the patterns of the world but being renewed by, by the renewing of the mind so that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god do you understand that scripture now hallelujah hallelujah so that was the introduction to the four mindsets the old mindset and the new mindset so we have to continue to pour water meditate on god's word something oh lord even even when you grow old your your mindset will be continually renewed that is how you walk in the ways of god with a renewed mindset and crucifying the old mindset hallelujah shall we go on to the next one and i am going to start the types of mind and the first mind is the carnal mind. Can everyone say the carnal carnal mind? The carnal mind. The carnal mind. Okay. The carnal mind. The carnal mind. The Bible talks about the carnal mind. The reason I took a lot of time on the old mind because what is the carnal mind? The carnal mind is the old mind. Okay. The carnal mind is the old mind that we had before Christ came into our lives. Before I was introduced to the Bible and to meditate on the word of God and to hear from God. The, the mind that I have had before that was the carnal mind. When I came to Christ, I, have, I am supposed to crucify that mind, kill that mind or give up that mindset, destroy that mindset and have a renewed mind, a new teaching. A new doctrine that starts to shape and give me a new lifestyle if your lifestyle hasn't changed after coming to christ there is a problem with your salvation anyone who comes to christ is a new creation the old has passed away and behold all things have become new so if you if a person came to christ as a beggar begging on the streets asking money and even after coming to christ after 10 years he is still asking money and begging his salvation is manipulated 
a person has to be introduced to a new lifestyle i know how my lifestyle has changed after walking with christ how my mindset has changed after walking with christ i know how my perspective has changed in every aspect in every aspect yes in the in the understanding of doctrine uh even in 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 my job that i used to do even in finances even developing perspective about situations i have changed a lot and there is a long way for me to go because i am renewing my mindset every day every day every day the lord points out something that is of the old give it up accept the new hallelujah that is what god says to you uh, says to us in isaiah behold i do a new thing remember not the former things hallelujah give up the old patterns and the more you walk with christ the more you will start to give up the old things and the more you will start to accept the new and being renewed and renewed and renewed and renewed and renewed by the working of the word of god and the power of the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah so so that is the carnal mind is the old mind that we had before we came to christ what did i say the problem with israel was not faith problem the problem with israel the people who came out of egypt oh my god I, I when i read the scripture i understand the frustration god went through my god god did such a lot of investment trained moses did the 10 plagues parted the red sea brought them out god wanted to take them to the promised land so much of investment <laughs> i am telling you if i was there investing on a person for 25 to 30 years almost 40 years above 40 years technically 57 years god invested on them 50 40 to 57 years i left my work and invested on those people and the people still did not change a bit how frustrated i would have been i would have taken rod and spanked them i don't know i would have sinned in anger but god was patient wow look at god oh i am frustrated brother no 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 brother if there there is someone eligible to get frustrated is god because he has he has bared a lot with us ha, hallelujah we have given him a lot of trouble do you believe that <laughs> hallelujah Amen. remember that when you get frustrated if someone has to be frustrated it, it is god it is not me because god what you have gone through because of us the human beings because of us your children it is a lot god we have given you a lot of trouble so <laughs> hallelujah these guys i don't know what's their problem the problem was was the mindset the problem was their upbringing the problem was the they were brought up in egypt they were introduced to slavery they were introduced to the system of provision that was egypt and pharaoh the problem was they ate the food that was cooked in Egypt. They ate the produce that was, that was harvested in Egypt. And that is the mindset that was created, the old mind. The problem was they even worshipped idols that belonged to Egypt. Yes, Israel worshipped idols. When they came out of Egypt, they brought idols of Egypt along with them. When you read the book of Ezekiel, you will know that. Read the book of Ezekiel, I think chapter number 20. You will know that that when Israel was coming out of Egypt, they brought the idols. So what is the problem of Israel? Why Israel could not enter the promised land? The people who were brought out never entered the promised land except Joshua and Caleb was because of the carnal mind. Because they hung on to their old mind. They hanged on to their old mind. Turn with me to Numbers chapter number 11. Turn with me to Numbers chapter number 11. 11. Hallelujah. Verse number 1. Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it, and his anger was arose, so the fire of the Lord burned among them, and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So, he called the name of the place Tabera, 
because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember, underline we remember, the old mind. The old mind. We remember the fish we, which we ate freely in Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now listen to me. What did I say? The old mind is like a stronghold. It's a confirmed mindset. So people who operate in the old mind can are not flexible with God. Are, are not able to be flexible with the plan of God. You need to be flexible. You Do you understand when I say flexible, what do I mean? You need to be flexible with God. If God says to you, leave your family, leave your property and then go out, you need to be flexible. Okay, I can do that, God. You are not confirmed to any, any type of convenience. You are ready to do that for God. So if you want to walk with God, you need to have a renewed... To, that is what happened with Abraham, with Isaac. You will see that the same thing happened with Jacob. Today they were here, but God said, tomorrow you are going to be there. So, so, so make the arrangements, pack up, change your lifestyle and go there. Live there. Okay, now it's over. Go from travel from this place to that place. They were the patriarchs. They were the sojourners who traveled toward, towards a promised land. Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Are we understanding? Hallelujah. If, if I am a sojourner, I, God says, start off from India, go to, go to another nation. I have, I have to leave my convenience in India. I have to leave my, uh, my things that I have acquired in India, leave them, go and go to another place and settle down and do what God tells me. To. So, so you need, we need to be flexible. That is a renewed mindset. <clears throat> where, listen, 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 where we are not depending on the meat that is in our freezer. Oh, we have meat in the freezer. But we are depending on a manna that comes fresh every morning. Are you, are you understanding? The meat, there is meat in the freezer. I can keep it for one month and eat of it. But there is something that God gives fresh every morning and it's different so i don't know tomorrow morning what god has for me when i wake up tomorrow morning i seek the lord the lord speaks to me i know what you have in store for me i am not depending on tomorrow for my today that is the old mind so they said we remember the food of egypt they or oh, the food of yesterday is not sorry not the not tomorrow yesterday i am not depending on the meat of yesterday I'm not depending on the, on the things confirmed to the things of yesterday and of the past to control my present. What I am doing is I am living today on the fresh things that comes from God. And if God says that there are some changes you need to make, I'm ready to make the changes. Are you understanding operating by the new mind? Operating by the new mind is taking a risk. Operating by the new mind is you don't know tomorrow where God will take you. Tomorrow where God will take you, you don't know. And when Obadiah met Elijah and Elijah said to Obadiah, go and tell King Ahab, I am here, come and meet me. Obadiah told Elijah, my master, my Lord, Elijah, I will not go because he, will, he would have me killed. Because I know today you are here, tomorrow the Lord takes you somewhere. So you have no proper destination. Those are the men of God who are not confirmed to a specific mind and to a specific place. What did Jesus said to Nicodemus? He said, those who are born by the Spirit. You see, the you, you hear the wind, but you don't know where it comes from and where it goes. So are the children who are born of the Spirit. You don't know where they will go. Hallelujah. Are we understanding that? But these people were like, we remember the cucumbers. 
they are confirmed to a specific pattern and they don't want to get into the new pattern that God is introducing them to. Hallelujah. Are we understanding people of God? They are not able to understand the new pattern that God is introducing them to. So it says we remember the fish. We freely ate in Egypt the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks. But we are dried up waiting for this manna every day. A Christian life is lived afresh every day. And then you need to be flexible. Whatever God tells you to do, that is a renewed mind. Are we understanding that? So that was the problem. That was the problem with the people of Israel. They were used to work for Pharaoh and they knew we will get a monthly salary. And with that monthly salary, we buy the cucumbers, we buy the melon, we buy the meat, we buy the quails, we buy those stuff and, and we put it in the freezer. Uh, winter is coming, so we can buy stuff, put it in the freezer, eat it. You know, there is no problem. There is security for tomorrow. I have invested in, in the funds. I have invested in stocks. There is security for me, for my retirement age. When you serve God, God does not give you security assurances. It's every day. It's <laughs> tomorrow you don't know, but you have to depend. God, I know you are there with me. There are no guaranteed, guaranteed, you know how in, in India, uh, we, we, there is something called as an insurance policy, life insurance policy company. So a kind of, we, we invest in that, people would invest in that and they will say there are guaranteed return after you turn 55 years, you will get this much amount of dollars, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars if you invest every month after you turn 55. I don't even know where I will be when I will be 55. So I am not invested in that policy. Hallelujah. What I am investing in is in the things of heaven. And the returns there are non-perishable. The returns there are non-perishable. Invest in heaven where thieves cannot steal it and where, where moth cannot destroy and where it cannot be rusted. Hallelujah. Are we understanding? So that is how a renewed mindset is. A renewed mindset has to take the risk. A renewed mindset has to depend on God for every day. You cannot say, I want to be confirmed where they are giving me guaranteed returns and guaranteed assurances. No, for walking with God, you need to walk by faith and not by sight. He will not give you a guarantee. He will just give you a word. And his word to you will be the guarantee. If you can trust that word and walk in the word, hallelujah, and have faith, and sometimes things will not happen. But you got to have the faith. I am telling you what you are getting that guaranteed returns. The returns that you get in this faith journey with God will be immense. You can't imagine. It will be immensely larger than what the world can offer you. What the devil can offer you. What your hard work can offer you. Hallelujah. That is the renewed mindset. And Israel were not able to get not able to get rid of that old mindset. They wanted the guarantee. They wanted the leeks, the cucumbers, the way they enjoyed Egypt, the way the Pharaoh provided for them. They were not able to get out of that system, out of that mindset. Hallelujah. Another verse, Numbers chapter number 13. Numbers chapter number 13. Let me not read the whole chapter. Numbers chapter number 13 talks about the the spies that were sent to Canaan to spy Canaan there is a lot of revelation in that but I don't have time into for going into that but let's start from Numbers chapter number 13 verse number <coughs> 25 Numbers chapter number 13 verse number 25 and they returned from spying out the land for 40 days now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of children of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran. At Kadesh, they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. 
and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, the cities are fortified uh, and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There, are the, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Chapter number 14, verse number 1. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation and said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if we only we, we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? <clears throat> that our wives and children should become victims. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Hallelujah. You heard the scripture? So, listen to me very carefully. The spies spied out the land. There were 12 spies, <coughs> out of which Joshua and Caleb, the two spies, said, we can go and we can destroy, you know, the giants and, and capture the land because the Lord has given us the land. But on the contrary, there were eight spies, or rather the ten spies, who said, we cannot go there because they are giants and we are like grasshoppers. We cannot fight them. And then after saying this report, all the children of Israel wept and cried and said, we want to return back to Egypt. Now write this down what I am saying. Your old mind or the carnal mind shapes your perspective. Shapes your perspective. The way you evaluate things. So even if the Lord wants to bless you with a land of milk and honey, but and the lord wants to give you comfort and joy but your eyes will show you destruction and darkness why because you are operating in the old mindset people of god are we there are you listening say, can you say amen hallelujah your hallelujah amen amen, amen. amen. okay if you amen. if i am operating and if you are operating by your old mind your old mind will shape your perspective, the way you look at things. I, I remember when God was training me, there were some things that was supposed to bring me joy and happiness and blessing. But because I operated in my old mind, the way I looked at it, I said, oh, again, trouble, again, devastation. I don't want it. May you have the eyes to see what God is blessing you with. Because if you don't have it, you will reject the things of God. Hallelujah. You will reject the blessing of God. That is what Israel did. When, you, when we operate by the old mind, we cannot receive from the hand of God. See the difference. Joshua and Caleb, they said the Lord has told us we will have the victory. Though they are giants, we are small, but we will destroy them. We will capture the land we will we are on our verge for the promise to be fulfilled but these other spies said we are grasshoppers they are big that is how people speak when they are operating in their old in the old mindset in the carnal mindset that is called a carnal mind the mind that is a old mind that we had before we came to christ we operate even today in the same mindset in the same mindset Hallelujah. So, when we operate in, our, in the old mind, 
in the carnal mind it it starts to shape our perspective and then even when god is trying to bless us but we see that as a curse and we say we don't want it we want this one we don't want that we want this one we don't want this we want this one you know when i got the re renewed mindset i told god god whatever you want to give me and i know the things you want to give me the things you want to introduce to me will be beyond my capability because it should it will be by your grace i am ready to receive it you should know to receive from the hand of god you should know to receive when god blesses you sometimes god will bless you through people you should be humble enough to receive through those people are we understanding that hallelujah amen you see hallelujah that apostle paul hallelujah. talks about apostle paul was not a extremist man oh no 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 i am this i am that i will not receive from that person he would receive from the poorest church that was in macedonia that was in achaia even philippians the church of philippians he talks about it hallelujah because he knows he could see when god is blessing him and he would receive it with open heart but some people reject the things of god like the people of israel god wanted to take them into the promised land a land flowing with milk and honey a blessing what a wonderful blessing what a wonderful destination what a wonderful place to stay but what they saw there aha uh -huh, we don't want this we want to go back to egypt we want to go back to that comfortable life hallelujah 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 i remember when god called me into full time ministry i had a permanent job i had a job that would pay me a lot of money every month and god told me step out and 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 with no funds no savings he told me you have to your time has come at the age of 26 you need to step into full time ministry if i operated in the old mind no 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 i want to give get monthly salary i did, i i could not give give conditions to god like jacob gave condition god if you will give, give me water if you give me bread then you will be my god and uh, you will be my god and i will serve you and i will pay you my tithe that is what jacob said we cannot give god conditions so i did at that time i did not say to god you know what i will step into ministry if the salary i am getting in my job the same salary i will get when i step into ministry i i did not give any condition i said god i am ready to give up i resigned i resigned what and they asked me what is the reason you are resigning i told them i am going to serve the lord jesus christ full time so my reason for resignation spread in the whole organization managers that were managing other process met me and one of the manager came to me and he said to me I, I heard you are going you are leaving the company and i heard the reason what you have you are doing is a great job go ahead so the 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 reason that i put in my resignation was made known to the whole organization and the whole organization came to know about that i am going to serve jesus christ in a way i could introduced introduce the lifestyle of christ and how we live by faith to them and when i stepped into full time full time ministry i did not had a congregation what i did was i was i was praying and then i joined other ministers to contribute to them without taking money without taking salary but through the time through the time you know god is a god who does not gives a salary he gives rewards there is a difference between a salary and a reward a, a salary is a monotonous monotonous structure ah, i am working every month that is what i will receive a reward is a surprise ah, hallelujah a reward is and hallelujah do not be confirmed any longer to the patterns of the world but be re, be renewed be transformed by the renewing of your mind you got to adjust with god dear children of god you cannot say i want to be in that system of egypt come out of egypt come out of that mind and see god is changing the systems god is changing your perspective god is changing your thinking hallelujah and if you are not having a renewed mind 
you i i could not have seen the blessing that god was calling me in the blessing to minister for god the blessing to serve the lord hallelujah and even as i trusted him by time i saw the lord structuring everything newly and breaking the old system i used to operate in you need to have faith hallelujah you need to take the risk that is the renewed mindset that is the renewed mindset but the people of israel ah no 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 we don't want to go we want to get into the system of egypt back in egypt where we caught everything that was given you know when 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 you get everything in guarantee it's the system of the enemy because the devil operates like that but if when you get into the system of god what you will get is a word get out do this no assurance and then you have to keep the faith that is the system of god where everything operates by faith having faith having trust in god being obedient to the voice of god being obedient to the things that are unseen hallelujah are we understanding that is the carnal mind are we understanding what the people of israel operated in was a carnal mind and their carnality shaped their perspective shaped their perspective you know the servant of elisha he saw the enemy and he said alas my master we will be killed it's our last day why he said that because he had a carnal mind and that carnal mind shaped his perspective when you operate in the renewed mindset you will you will not see as you used to see before you will see things differently you will evaluate things differently the decisions you take it will be awesome it will be full of adventure and surprises hallelujah amen okay okay carnal mind carnal mind also includes what we call scientifically the subconscious mind the subconscious mind scientifically that is what they call it what is the subconscious mind the subconscious mind consists of the things in your mind that are fed or planted there in the early days of your life during your childhood your teenage days that have become your way of life the devil plays with the subconscious mind how many times it has happened with you that the music that you are playing in your car for the whole day the next morning you get up it rings in your mind there was a subconscious storage that was activated a reception without your will because you heard it it was stored because you saw it it was stored in your memory that was that is why pornography is a very very grievous sin because we are storing things in our subconscious mind pictures in our subconscious mind are we understanding when we listen to me i will tell you a mystery the devil the devil stores pornographic lustful pictures and the things of sin in the subconscious mind but the things of god cannot be stored in the subconscious mind the things of god can only be stored in the spiritual mind are we together in that that's why you can remember a pornographic picture that you saw but once you read the word of god you forget about it you hear a sermon you forget about it if i were to ask you a question what did we hear last week sunday night most of us don't know about it we forgot about it because we don't understand the storage system of the word of god of the mysteries of god we don't understand how to study the word of god in order for the storage to be done in what part of the mind it's the spiritual mind hallelujah amen people of god are we there to not, uh, if you are there say amen hallelujah amen amen, amen. hallelujah subconscious amen. mind amen. that is the scientific term i used to teach subconscious mind are the things that are stored without your will the things you see the things you are surfing on the internet if you are surfing on the internet now the devil is very shrewd you see the internet you are surfing through 
you never searched for a half naked lady you never searched you are a good person you are a good christian i know that but while surfing through accidentally something comes up which is a pornographic or a half naked lady and you see it and your eyes stop there automatically your eyes stop there on that picture ah two seconds no 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 i don't should i should not see it and you swipe it, swipe it up but what the devil tries to do it do is he tries to find a foothold and he gets a foothold at the time you will not be able to resist a temptation when we i am not able to resist a temptation he gets a foothold and he he is able to store a uh, imagination he is able to store a picture a memory in my subconscious mind through which he can come in my dreams with a sexual thing and continue to continue the to plant and grow the seed of sin in my subconscious mind without me knowing it that is how the subconscious mind operates and the subconscious mind is a part of the carnal mind hallelujah so that is why a christian should be quick to resist temptation a temptation is not a sin a temptation is not what not a sin a man of god whom i listen and who is approved by god and i i listen to that man of god came on the pulpit and said if i have slept with any woman let the woman come in front and tell about it if i have lived a pure life let let the woman post on my that that is what i have done i have never ever touched a woman who is not my wife and i want to give a challenge to men of god who think they are men of god can you say that on your pulpit and can you say that on your pulpit that is what the man of god said so after he said that many other men of god were aggravated they said what is he saying and most of the men of god who are very famous and influential you know what they said they said he is a liar because there cannot be one man who has not lusted after a woman everyone lust in their heart and that is adultery mm. what so they said they did not did the challenge rather criticize this man of god what i want to say is the problem there is the they don't know the difference between temptation and sin i am a man and i am telling you obviously i will be attracted towards beauty that's the nature of flesh but the thing is when i am attracted when i am tempted do i receive and ponder on the temptation or do i reject it and turn away my eyes from it hallelujah you are not do you understand that you are not holy that oh i i cannot say to you i am super holy i don't even get tempted jesus was tempted in every way we were tempted but he did not yield to sin are you understanding hallelujah if i am on a fast I'm, I, I, sometimes in the hotel room i was on a fast and then there are restaurants in the hotel room and there are pantries where they cook food and when they cook food i am on a i have not eaten from seven days and they are cooking chicken and the smell of it comes to me and i am tempted oh wow but then i realize i am on a fast i don't eat it that is i was tempted but i resisted the temptation i am not a spirit i am a i am in the flesh are you understanding that hallelujah so a temptation is where the devil comes to so store some things in your subconscious mind without your will without your will and the greatest of the men of god will have sexual dreams the greatest of them because the subconscious mind is what we have to understand is a storage room where things are put in without the will of the person do you understand that people of god yes mm -hmm. yes that does not means you are a sinner you are a lustful person if you got a dream it happened because of the subconscious mind it happened because of that subconscious mind it's a part of your carnal mind and that's why the battle between the flesh and the spirit is a intense battle is a intense battle it's a fight for purity it's a fight for holiness it it is a fight to stay consecrated it is a fight to stay disciplined and stay in the course and stay 
and live the life that God wants us to live, a holy life. It's a fight. Hallelujah. Let me stop here. I am out of time. The subconscious mind is a part of the carnal mind. I will continue on the carnal mind coming Sunday night. Hallelujah. But I pray that, that people will be transformed even as you hear these teachings. Hallelujah. So now that we will break from our old mindset, from our carnal mind and understand the workings of the enemy and understand that we need to have a renewed mind. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you. Hallelujah. You said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will expose every wiles and strategies of the enemy that he works through the human mind. Oh Lord, even as we study on this mind, I pray for grace, Lord, that we will understand your, your doctrine, Lord. We will understand the mystery of the human mind, Lord. This mindset, Lord. And we will realize, Lord, even as you are speaking to us, the old mind and the old habits and the old perspectives we need to break free from. And you will deliver people by breaking strongholds in their minds. Deliver them and even as strongholds are broken. And even as strongholds are broken, Lord, demons will come out in Jesus' mighty name. Because many of the demonic spirits who are controlling the lives of people are sitting in those strongholds. Are sitting and hiding in those mindsets. I pray when those mindsets will be broken, when there will be a wave of repentance among your children, demons will come out in the name of Jesus Christ that manipulated their life, Lord. And Lord, that they will be the rivers, Lord, the fountain of living waters who will flow and who will not be confirmed like a stronghold. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to give you all the praise, honor and glory. I cover all the people, even those who are not able to make it, Father. Take care of them and lead them and guide them in your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God's